this game is a fucking triumph. Santa Monica has done it again and done it bigger, greater, flashier. Every moment of this game has you on the edge of your seat. It's a slow and careful journey, but it's a tense and powerful ride to the finish line. An ending you so desperately want to reach, but are so terrified of what awaits you. Where the first Norse God of War was a game about family, revenge, and the cycle of violence, this game is a lot wider in the net that it casts. The last game started off with the player and Kratos in a new land. Everything was unfamiliar, so everything came with an explanation, and your destination was a certainty. You just gotta go walk up a mountain. In Ragnarok, there are so many ways for the story to go that I was expecting anything, and anything kept knocking on my door and punching me in the dick when I answered. The first hour of the first game was going to be hard to top, but Santa Monica left their punches at the door and delivered an exquisite opening. Except for the fact that the first boss battle is just a bear. I thought that after Boulder that- OH MY GOD! Oh FUCK! After everything the first game set up for us, its narrower focus on cast and mythological elements now feels surgical in retrospect. Every minute detail was handcrafted and positioned for a proverbial firing squad of narrative elements unmatched in their incredible scale and weight. At every step, you as the player feel like your hands are not on the wheel. This experience is one that you are gripping onto for dear life. Even while you can control Kratos, twists will come at you without hesitation or warning and leave you out of breath. And the cast is a lot more present this time around. Rather than keeping the dialogue to squabbles between father and son, Sindri, Brock, Tyr, Mimir, and a uh, squirrel become a core part of the narrative in an incredibly endearing and important form. These simple merchants went from giving useful tips and telling funny stories to being fully realized characters in their own right. And that's without even touching Tyr, who takes the stage with such a haunting, tragic opening that drowns you in emotion. As for the opposing cast, I am shocked at the level of detail and care given to the Asgardians in making them feel like wholly unique characters. There isn't a moment wasted on them, nor a single line of dialogue wasted, which creates a story that truly feels like an epic. Atreus's mission here is to pull the threads of Ragnarok apart until he figures out what role he's supposed to play in it, while Kratos tries his best to keep them alive. His son has matured into a brave and kind-hearted wannabe warrior who doesn't seem to realize the weight of the situation, and the role of Kratos changes drastically in Ragnarok. The first game showed us a new father with a hidden past who fought against everyone telling him to trust his son with the truth. Here we see a Kratos who is learning on his own merit to trust his son full stop. So much of his journey hinges on the decision to listen to his son, not just hear him, but have faith in him. This story together is one of the most beautiful developments you can find. Through some helpful tinkering, you now find yourself able to visit the Nine Realms, each land with its own beautiful environment and awe-inspiring design. They also come with a menagerie of beasts waiting to kill you, to the point that criticisms for the first game's repetitive bosses now seem like they were taken personally. I'm so sick of this goddamn skeleton! I'm sorry son, I am no more. You can't talk much when you're in two pieces, can you? Just as a note, this one guy took me 12 attempts to beat. I'm playing on normal mode, I fucking hate this thing! While the sequel hasn't stepped up that much in terms of graphics or combat, I think that's a huge benefit for the game we get. Ragnarok sets itself apart from so many other series by acting like the second half of a story. Whether it's the cinematic action that has you clenching your butt for dear life, or the huge weight behind the end of every chapter, this story feels like the second edition of a great ancient odyssey. It's all the same world, it's what you're used to, but it opens up so much that for better or worse, you can sometimes feel lost in it. The combat is certainly bigger, with new abilities that take up more space and dole out more damage. The fighting has remained largely unchanged, with a simple boost to the theatrics of your special moves. Though, I will say the RPG elements introduced in the first game have only gotten more detailed, as your skills can now have additional effects equipped, as well as various charms that you can stack up. None of this really gets in the way, though. It's a lot of tiny bonuses that don't feel necessary when using your basic attack gets the job done 90% of the time. While it can be annoying, these are grievances that don't contribute to any part of the game's overall quality. They're just there. As for the world, the magic of the first game's exploration through Midgard isn't something that they could recreate in this game given the story, but you can explore in the same way through the other realms. Vanaheim and Svartalfheim make for fantastic and gorgeous replacements for this. 
While Midgard remains a frigid and decaying land, there are still lakes to explore, treasure to be found, and lost souls seeking fulfillment. Also, you go on a mission to stop climate change. The air smells a lot cleaner. It's because we shut down the rig. If you like the first in this saga, you will love what is awaiting you in Ragnarok. We have been delivered not only one of the best video games of all time, but one of the best told stories of all time. It is enchanting, it is beautiful, it is harrowing and haunting, but also hopeful and sincere. This game is an odyssey, through and through. And the soundtrack is impeccable. It was actually composed by a bear. I think it will do me well to see the light of Elfheim again. Hmm. That Elf light was some good shit.